Well, yeah, speaking of family, in 2007, your son, Daryl Strawberry Jr., a.k.a. DJ, was actually drafted by the Phoenix Suns. So although he didn't follow you in baseball, he did follow you in professional sports. How did that feel to have... Now, that's your oldest son, right? That's my oldest son, DJ, yes. Yeah, so DJ, your oldest son, how did it feel for him to become a professional athlete as well? It felt great, but I never wanted any of my kids to ever be in professional sports. Mm. I didn't say a whole lot about it, but I had already experienced it in my whole life. And I really didn't want them to experience that and go into that life. And my hope was that they would never get consumed with that lifestyle and get lost in it. I mean, I wanted them to do well. All my kids went to D1 college, played sports, my girls, my boys, DJ played at Maryland basketball. Jordan played at Mercer in Macon, Georgia, D1 basketball. Um, they had great careers. They got degrees, something I never did. I didn't go to D1 school. Um, they got an education in college. I didn't. They said, what? I told my kids I got an education from the sidewalk, sidewalk university from the streets. <laughs> That was my education. So I didn't want them to get the education that I got. I wanted them to get a better education. So uh, I was really excited the fact that he did play and get drafted by Phoenix, play with the Suns, and then he went over to European basketball for many years and played over there for about 15 years or so. So I was happy mm. that because he played, he got into that spotlight a little bit, and and I knew what, what it would be about. It would be about girls, nightclubs, drinking, and, you know, out living the life. And... Um, he did a little bit of that, and then he just checked out and went on over to overseas. And, and I, that probably was the best decision for him. You wasn't going to make overseas, make much as money you would in the NBAs, but there was a life in that lifestyle that was different. And mm -hmm. it's no different than a baseball lifestyle, football lifestyle. It's the same lifestyle. And I didn't want him to have to experience that. Well, in 2010, he showed up on Donald Trump's uh, Celebrity Apprentice with uh, <laughs> Brett Michaels, Sharon Osbourne, Cindy Lauper, and of course, Donald Trump. Now, this is way before he was president. Wow. So did you, did you get to know Trump during that time at all? I knew Trump from my days in New York before he was even oh, was president. Oh, okay. You know? I mean, any, he's a, any interesting Trump stories? You know, he's a, he's a, he was to... just a big guy, big guy in New York City. Um, I mean, he went to all the sporting events. Everybody loved him when, when he was not before president. You know, he was Donald Trump. You know, he was Celebrity Apprentice. He was, you know, he was everything. I mean, because he, he you remember, I mean, when they first started that new football league uh, with Herschel Walker, and them, I mean, he was part yeah, of that. U USFL. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You know, and he, he, I think he was the first one to sign Herschel Walker to a million dollars. You know, right. so. We we know him from I'm, those are the days I I knew him from and everything and and then I got invited to be on the show and my wife didn't really want me to go on the show you know but I I knew one of his guys that was a part of his organization and ran this golf course all over the country you know because I used to play on this golf courses so um, that's what happened he asked he says well Trump wants you to be on the show and so I was like okay I got on it and. And I was like, wow, you know, because I was on the journey. That's when I was on the journey of going in a different direction. And my wife was really, she was really upset that day, you know, that I would go on the show. She let me go on it, but she never got in the way, but she wasn't really happy about it. And, and I did go on the show. And it, 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 was, it was pretty interesting, you know. Well, uh, speaking of Trump, in 2020, you had an interview uh, with Aaron Elmore. And she asked you what you thought of Kaepernick and the whole kneeling thing. And it, it was a bit of a loaded question. But uh, basically, she said, what would you tell these athletes today who are playing politics with their job when their job is sports? And you said, I would tell them, really leave the politics alone as far as your job. You go out and do your job and play sports because you really have a one-time window open to play sports and have an impact on sports that's going to pass away. But what legacy do you leave in life? And that's the most important thing. And, and a lot of people kind of interpreted that as like a shut up and dribble kind of answer. But I didn't really see it as that. But but there was a backlash. I mean, when you think about that question, how do you feel about it now? I mean, I, I still stand on what I said because I know it's only a certain window of time, you know. And you can make one one decision, you know, in front of everybody and it could cost you your career. And people don't understand that. And they thought, you know, yeah, I was like, yeah, well, you don't know what you're talking about. But see, look what happened to him. 
You know, his, his career. Yeah, yeah he, he never he never played again. Never played again because they're going to cut you out of it. You know, they, they have they have all the authority to run the sports. And, you know, the owners, uh, they run sports, not not players, not fans. It's the owners that run that business, you know, and it's and it's up to them. They, they It's a yes or no with them if they don't want you. And players don't understand that career. Your career is only this long. And then that day come, you got to retire. And when you retire, who are you? You think about it. Most players that will play, if you wasn't a superstar, most of the time, you're not getting invited back. It's only the guys that have been superstars for the organization that they bring back for, you know, certain things in their careers. Why? Because they had such a great impact on what the organization was all about. And, you know, everybody was screaming and kicking and saying, well, he don't know what he's talking about. He's this and that. Listen, I've been there. I played there. I played there at the highest level. You guys, a lot of them don't know what they're talking about. You know, you're outsiders making noise. And I knew for him and him being the football player he was that they were going to hold that against him. And I knew the fact that he would probably never get a job again, you know, because of the, the fact everybody's saying, well, he was just uh, he was just a quarterback. He was you know, he wasn't he wasn't what like Mahomes or, you know, Lamar Jackson, these guys that are standing today, you know, that that, that have a voice and, and a platform where they could say something and, and, and nobody can hold it against them. You can't hold that against a guy like LeBron James because he has created his own platform of his uh, of his great success for who he is. But if you're just a player and you haven't made it up to that level and you do something like that, they're going to they're gonna run you right out of here. So I, I, I tried to say that in a way, in, in a way that people would see it, but they didn't want to see it that way. They thought I didn't really know what I was talking about. But at the end of the day, what happened? Right. Right. And, you know, before you actually start playing professional sports, there's the whole 68 Olympics thing that happened with Tommy Smith and John Carlos, where they, they raised the, the fist, you know, when they were winning their medals. And they took a lot of backlash. So it just seemed like over the next 20 years, during the time you were playing, no one really made a lot of noise in professional sports. No one really protested or spoke out against, you know, they pretty much did the game and played quiet until what happened with Kaepernick a few years ago? Well, I think a lot of times people don't. If you don't understand the national anthem, you don't understand what the flag is for and the freedom that the people have fought for you to have the freedom to live here and be here and go and play professional sports, then you don't understand. If you don't understand what that that's all about, you know, that, you know, I mean, I get it. I understand that that wasn't the thing to be protesting about. We needed to be protesting about something totally different than that. We needed to be protesting about the brutality of police on the streets. That's what they should. Everybody should have been rallying around protesting. And it, it had nothing to do with us standing up. And, you know, I, I mean, I heard that song so many times I would never miss it. You know, when it, when that song is being played and you you got a baseball uniform, football, basketball uniform on, you will stand to that because you honor that, you honor for what, you know, the flag means to you because somebody has made a way for us to be able to stand here and be on this field, putting this uniform and, our, and having our safety to play a game of baseball.